Alright, so I'm here with a game called Katawa Shoujo, which I basically know nothing about, so I'm going into it blind. So I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right, but this game came out like 10 years ago, so they released it again uh, recently for the 10 year anniversary. A light breeze caused the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. I hate the snow, so eh. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. Isn't that the stuff they start fires with? I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. So what are we waiting here for from this note? Ah yes, the note. So it's between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the weather and the walker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. Are they being confessed to or something? As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens, the plot thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in a stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching behind me. I don't know why this game came out before in the tale, but that reminded me of like Sans is approaching behind them. Hisao? You came? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face his voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Oanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it! I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good one, and that was the result. I mean, what else would you ask? Pathetic. Um, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. We're the guy, right? I'm just not used to them showing the main character's face and visual knowledge, so I wasn't sure. Or them even naming the character. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim the, this girl for itself. Excuse me. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches, the cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. Is it not going to show her face? As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine as she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. So we are the guy then. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a, wind a word out if I tried. You see... Oh, heartbeat again. I wanted to know. I don't know. If he'd go out with me. It seems like he got faster. I stand there emotionless. Save for my pounding heart. I want to say something or reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Hassal? I reach over to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Along his arms? Hassal? <laughs> my whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Oh no. What is happening? Hassel. The beating of my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. I don't know, you're beating your heart and suddenly stopping isn't a good thing. But I like that swirl. The world around me, the cre- cannot- Jesus. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, it would knock her running towards me. All these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of it would knock her screaming for help, and the incessant clatter of the branches above. Oh. Heart Monitor. Four Leaf Studios presents. So we're alive at least. 
Katala Shoujo. Inspiration, Raita, Raita. I didn't expect this to be like a video, I expected it to be still images, Anonymous 22, or a CPL credit. That was the writing, but like, editing, Kagami, Lost Rod, Silent Cook. Music, Blue 123, Nicole Arm, Arfi. Art, Gaby Tura, Kami Fishney. The art is good. Art, Milky, Rames, Raid. Additional art, Climatic, Doomfist, Ujovi. I don't like Needle, so that's eh, but. FME Innovation, Mike and L. Or not as bad as they used to be. Directing Delta, Raid, Ujovi. Engineering, Delta. The animation is good though. Production, CPL, Crud, and Sirico. Uh, it getting fuzzy, that doesn't seem good. It's been four months since my heart attack. Oh, you can see leaves falling out the window. And then whole time, I can probably count the times I've left the hus this hustle room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. Isn't that where, like, your heart beats, uh, wrong or something? Like, too fast or too slow or something? I don't know, it's just a guess. A strange word, a foreign, alien one. One they don't want to be in the same room with. Uh, sorry, one sec. Okay. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. You should be appreciative of life anyway. Any day could be your last. You never know. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course there isn't a cure. I don't think it can be. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. Did the girl come? For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, cards, Iwanaka, or whatever her name was. But the visitors soon dwindled and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards of flowers was because sending me their sympathy had turned had been turned into a class project. Now that's sad. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. So she probably didn't want to get with you again for some reason? The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. I mean, I've never had to stay in the hospital for months, but I can imagine no one would like to stay there. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked a head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. That's a heart doctor, ain't it? He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait to see, to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly changed his appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of phenomenon. I still asked the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. That's better than none at all. At some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why. I just did. I figured it'd be a way to pass time, though. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. Maybe. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. 
I can relate to that. I'm in the book club. But unfortunately, they canceled our meeting for today. But I love the stories. Uh, I usually like book fiction of any kind, but I really like stuff like um, The Hunger Games and whatnot. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly hard to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. I also liked the book Divergent. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. I, I got that. I, there's t times been going by insanely fast to me. Sometimes I'd pause the realization I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and lay down ju and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Oh, uh, that's kind of sad. Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. Is he trying to tell me we're going to leave or something? My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. Yeah, it seems like we're getting out of here then. There's this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers and setting them aside as if to make a point for the pointlessness of what he just did. That's weird. And he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hassal. How are you today? I'm doing alright. I'm alive, I guess. I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medication sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. Oh, that ain't a good sound. I take it from his hand and take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The terribly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters, but decreased concentration, uh, I'm trying to know what I can notice, diarrhea, um, cold extremities, hypotension, this is insane, uh, nightmares, side effects, adverse effects, contradictions and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision, uh, nausea is in there, I think, um, clinical depression passed by. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attending to, only, attending to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life, every day. I'm afraid that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. That'd be nice. Years, what kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. I mean, I don't know, it's at least telling you the truth. Also, I've spoken with your parents and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, calm down, Hassel. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down. The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. I'm going to be homes am I going to be homeschooled? Yeah, usually telling an angry person to calm down is usually the wrong thing to do. Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. I like the font they used. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yam Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled what am I? It has a 24-hour nursing staff and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence is a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. At least we're trying to help you, though. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. 
We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. I mean, not really, but it's better than dying. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. But maybe my thoughts are just like this because I've never been in a situation like that. Knock on wood. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school. And while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. <laughs>